Vsauce. Uh, I'm Jake, and what are you doing on the ground? Let's get you cleaned up here. There, you are looking good as new. Actually, since I have you here, have you seen the film Interstellar? I watched it recently, and in the movie they use a wormhole, a shortcut through space and time to travel much more quickly, ostensibly time traveling. And that got me thinking about a problem, a complication with time travel. Paradoxes, like the bootstrap paradox, which has been used in things like the Ocarina of Time, Time Splitters, Terminator, and Back to the Future. It's when information or objects are never really created. Their existence starts by coming from the future and ends when they go in the past to become themselves. For example, in the Ocarina of Time, Guru Guru teaches Link the Song of Storms in the future. Yet Guru Guru learned the song from Link when Link traveled back in time and he heard it. Or, wait, where did this camera come from? Excuse me, could you keep it down? I'm trying to film. You know what? Let's go back in time a little and do the predestination paradox. The predestination paradox is when you travel to the past to try and stop or change the outcome of an event. Hello? Jake. Bill? Jake, Jake, you're, you're traveling through time. Correct, yes, I am. So you're going to experience time dilation. What you and I think of as the speed of time being constant, I mean, even when we're in a hurry, even when we lose track of time, we nominally imagine a clock that's running at a constant rate relative to the universe. But that turns out not to be true. It's not that the speed of time is constant, it's the speed at which energy can move is constant. This is to say the speed of light. So I want you to be careful of this because when you look at your watch, it'll look like time is passing at normal speed, normal rate. But in fact, the universe is moving along at its own speed. And when you try to reconnect with it, you may end up changing the course of history in such a way that you never exist. And neither do I. Bill? Bill! Bill! I'm trying to film. So with the predestination paradox, you going back in time to try and stop an event is what causes it in the first place, which then leads to future you going back in time to try and stop it. We, we should move. When we talk about going backwards in time, we tend to think of it like the butterfly effect, where doing something as seemingly inconsequential as stepping on a flower or Squashing a bug can cause a domino effect, rippling through space and time, causing drastic changes to our future. Do, do I have a mustache now? And where did this knife come from? Hmm. However, in most paradoxes, the timeline is a closed loop. Isaac Brock has a great line that goes, the universe is shaped exactly like the Earth. If you go straight long enough, you'll just end up where you were. Why do I still have this knife? Oh, oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, I just killed myself, literally. This is great, actually, this works perfectly. Okay, okay. We just hit the grandfather paradox. Now the grandfather paradox is fairly simple. If you were to go back in time and kill your grandfather, he wouldn't have one of your parents, and they wouldn't have you, so you wouldn't exist and couldn't go kill your grandfather. But in this case, I killed myself. And if I were to go back in time to kill myself, I wouldn't be alive to go back in time to kill myself. Which means, I couldn't kill myself. So therefore, I'm still alive and will continue on forward until I eventually, and accidentally, kill myself, which means this whole video is a paradox. And as always, thanks for watching. Vsauce, Ugh. I'm Jake and what are you doing on the ground? <laughs>